Hey everybody and welcome back. So this is a continuation of the C-130 project I worked on many years ago. Uh, long story short, got the plane 99% done and sold it. It helps pay for my hobby. I basically kind of ran out of money like I did on the B-36 project. But I decided to take the full, over 4,000 uh, pictures and all the data I have and create a video series. And this is video number three. Video number one was an overview that talked about the project. You can find that in the, I have a link in the description below. Uh, video number two was about the design, how I designed it in CAD. That link is also in the description. And this one is about designing, uh, I'm sorry, assembling the fuselage, making the fuselage, okay? So let's talk about this. So um, when it came to building the fuselage on this, it needed to have a lot of stuff in it um, that worked a very specific way. So I really had to think way ahead of the curve, uh, at least in my mind, <laughs> to know how I'm going to get it to have a working, you know, cargo uh, deck inside it. I needed to have the rail system in it. And I'm going to talk about that when I talk about the ramp, actually. So there was a lot, uh, the landing gear had to fit in there. Uh, a lot of electronics had to fit in that fuselage. There's so many things that had to go inside there that I was kind of, I had my fingers crossed that when I designed the cubic volume of the fuselage, I was gonna leave myself enough room for all this stuff because there's only so far with my experience that I can get uh, to make that all work. So um, before we get too far into this, I do wanna talk about my awesome sponsor, RTL Fasteners. If you go to their website, you'll see they have, for the hobby industry, especially RC, they have the bolts, nuts, blind nuts, washers, specialty washers, servo screws, everything we use in the hobby. If you go to their website and use a top secret code called DA30, you will get 30% off any order over 50 bucks. It's a great deal. They have great hardware. I really suggest you go look at it. So here is a kind of a, a I don't want to use the, I, I kind of use the word famous. This picture went all over the internet when I first posted it. This is my daughter. She's now 20. <laughs> Shows how many years ago that was. And um, I was super excited with the way this went. But what I want to suggest to anybody who's a scratch builder, and what I mean is from your own design, when you're doing the CAD drawings and then you print them out and you look at your CAD drawings, I really would suggest that you spend an incredible amount of time kind of daydreaming or assembling everything in your mind and then take some notes on the sequence. Because, you know, like if you're going to make a mold um, and then you're going to put guts into the fuselage once you pull the, the uh, skins out of the mold, you got to think about how your wings are attaching, how your stab's attaching. You, you, you really need to design as much as you can, but sometimes if you design it down to the exact little nut and bolt, you'll realize as you're building it, I didn't need that or, or I'm, this is overkill. And I had a lot of overkill on this. So let's go to the full screen here and get going. And this is going to be a long video, everybody, because I have over... 89 um, things to share with you. So I started on the left, like I said, I had my drawings. There you can see that I actually laid my hacker motor and a battery on some of the different profiles of the drawings and things, just kind of daydreaming how this was all going to go together. The drawing on the, I mean, the picture on the right is the stack of styrofoam that I bought from a hardware store, and my daughter standing there uh, with a I think that's a monogram uh, C-130 on it. It might not be monogram. I can't remember who it was. I always try to build a plastic model kit of the plane I'm going to build because it helps me three-dimensionally also see what I'm trying to do. That's if a plastic model kit is made of the said aircraft. So basically, here is a picture where I had started cutting out the fuselage sections that were all going to be the same size. 
So there's about probably 40% of the fuselage on this airplane where all of the, I mean, the fuselage is the same diameter over the, the given length. So I had laid these down on the drawing just to make sure that the height fit and I was doing some measurements to make sure that just everything looked right. And keep in mind though, I'm, I'm trying in my mind to think about how I'm going to get all of this glued together and how I'm going to build it straight. Building it straight is one of the most important things to me as uh, a designer um, because you know, you can be a great designer and a bad builder, or you can be a poor designer and a great builder. When you're starting completely from nothing and doing your own drawings, you've got to kind of be both. So here I am starting to kind of lay out some of the other ones. Now this was all cut out by my band, so I'll show you some pictures in a minute. But I cut out all this styrofoam here at the band saw. And... Um, just take your time now you'll notice there's angles though so when you cut out the bandsaw i then took what i call a t-bar or a sanding bar and i would lightly start to conform to the angle i thought i would need but i didn't want to get too far because once i glue this whole thing together i can then sand and use spackling putty and get the shape right and this is a plug right now so everybody knows this is just a plug i'm making to pull fiberglass skins from so on the right, you can see some of the carnage of me cutting out pieces and parts with my bandsaw. And I've got more pictures of that in a little bit. And on the left is my daughter holding one of the bulkheads for scale. And um, on the table, you can see the ass section of the fuselage starting to just be laid out and masking tape together a little bit. It's funny, I use six rolls of masking tape uh, building this plug. Uh, a lot of masking tape was uh, destroyed. Here is me laying out the fuselage first. Now look, I did have some problems on the nose of the airplane being 100% scale. And it's interesting that all of the trolls that come out and said, I would never build this airplane with the nose looking that bad. Well, good for them. I, I'm about the entire project, not just because I screwed up the scale on the nose a little bit on this airplane. Um, my, my skills just aren't there to get sometimes exact 100% scale, okay? People think that, oh, come on, if you're gonna build an airplane like this, you gotta make it perfect. Well, the word perfect doesn't exist. So here's another picture of it, and everything was numbered, everything was um, kind of tracked to make sure everything was going to do what I wanted it to do. Here's a picture of me you know, pulling out a couple of the uh, parts, just making sure everything kind of conformed and fit together. Okay, so here's another picture of all the carnage of all the styrofoam I had cut up. Um, on the left hand is my bandsaw, it's a grizzly bandsaw. On the right is some of the, more of the carnage. So that just gives you an idea. It took me about two days of four hours each to get all of this cut out. So it really wasn't that much time. It actually took me more time to cut out when I printed the drawings to cut out each bulkhead and lightly use like 3M77 contact adhesive to stick it on the styrofoam to cut the styrofoam out than it actually did to cut the styrofoam. Cutting the styrofoam was just a breeze. So here's both the right and left side of the fuselage. And you notice on the shelf up there to the left, there's a lot of Gorilla Glue there. Well, I was sharing this entire build on RC groups at the time, and I've pretty much left RC groups because there's just so many people there that have opinions that are just, uh, with all respect, worthless. So many people say, oh, you got to try this, and they've never done it themselves. So many people are like, why don't you do this? Well, I've already tested that, and I know that won't work. So there were some people saying you've got to use type bond because it's the greatest stuff with styrofoam. I'm thinking type bond. I've used that on wood and it's my go-to with wood if I'm not using an epoxy. <clears throat> so there's a couple of different types of type bond out there I bought and then I use my Gorilla Glue. One thing you may not know about Gorilla Glue, you've got to read the directions. Because I had so many people say, oh, well, Gorilla Glue is worthless. Gorilla Glue is activated by moisture or water. You can't use Gorilla Glue without having a spray bottle and misting some 
really light water on the glue and then putting the two parts together and then it will foam up and glue and be as strong as most epoxies. So the tight bond was worthless on foam. Uh, and I shouldn't say worthless. It just, when I cut it in half, the very middle never got any oxygen to it. The tight bond never dried. So tight bond needs air, I believe, to dry. At least my experiment showed that. The Gorilla Glue does not need air. It just needs moisture. So the Gorilla Glue is what I ended up gluing this plug together with. So now we start getting into all of the uh, uh, different type of masking tapes that I went through taping this thing together and getting it straight. Okay, now getting it straight was really hard because first of all, not a lot of tables you make are straight. And I kept double checking my table to make sure nothing was curving. I mean, I am just completely OCD with trying to build things straight. So this is one half of the fuselage that's sitting on a little jig there. There's that picture of my daughter. And then I flipped it on the side and this is where I started messing with getting everything perfect. Now you'll notice leaning against the table there, I had a, my hot, hot wire bow there. I was afraid that I was gonna have to build a a big jig so I would hot wire down the center of this entire thing to get it perfectly level and I didn't have to do it so I didn't at this point I didn't use my uh, hot wire uh, bow on anything uh, so far on this project then once I knew everything was straight I started putting the other half of the um, fuselage on this plug of course, using squares and everything to make sure it was straight. Started populating more and more of the fuselage until I ended up with this. And I was really, at this point, starting to get really excited that this was going to work for my plug. And I call this a reverse plug. And you're going to have to work with me on understanding this as I go through this because uh, it's, it's a uh, technique not done a lot. And but to me, it's I love it because it saves me a lot of time. So here is the fuse sitting on two drum uh, uh, cymbal stands that I use to hold a lot of my stuff together. My son was a drummer, and everybody knows as you go through different iterations of drum sets, you buy nicer and nicer gear. Well, I was poaching off his gear he wasn't using, and for hobbyists, these are incredibly strand, sta incredibly good stands. And then I started to spackle it. And I just cover the whole thing with regular um, com uh, joint compound or spackling putty. And just started to sand and coat and sand and coat. And then I finally ended up with this. And it was really smooth. As you can tell, the nose is a little bit goofy for a C-130. But keep in mind, the very front of that nose got cut off. And then I had actually the nose where, in real life, the radar dish sits. So while this isn't exact, it was close enough for me. And that's what it looked like. So now I glass this plug, okay? And I just put on two or three layers of two and a half ounce cloth and kept sanding it. Uh, and there's a little bit, bit of a jump here, and I'm not sure why I didn't take pictures of it. But once it was all um, glassed up here, this is where I would start to prime and sand it. Um, I want to show you the scrap that I cut away from it. Anytime I fiberglass, and I'm, I, I like to lather on the, I use West Systems Epoxy. I really lather on the uh, epoxy and then we'll use either a squeegee or paper towels to take off all the excess but anything that's hanging off of it I'll trim around and just throw it aside. Now I will warn you, you need to lay a, a trash bag or a piece of paper down because what's funny about this is most of this got glued to those two stands in the floor. The next day when I came back to this I actually spent two or three hours ungluing all of this and it was just me not thinking. I was more focused on getting the fuselage right. <laughs> so, but now I'll talk about where I started sanding. And now 
you really got to sand and prime, sand and prime, sand and prime, because this is a plug. I'm going to pull the actual skins off this. I'm not making a mold. I'm going to pull the skins off this. So here's another picture, and, and I'm ki not kidding. You might use 10 cans of primer to really get every little pinhole and everything. Well, I shouldn't say pinholes because, you know, I'll mix together a micro balloon solution um, that's a little bit wet, and I'll smear it all over the fuselage, and then I'll wipe that off with paper towels to fill the pinholes, okay? So now this next picture is a huge jump. You notice the fuselage is really shiny here and I'm starting to lay glass cloth on it. So the fuselage has been completely wet sanded down to 600 grain. And then I put on three coats of clear polyurethane, the kind you buy at the hardware store, and then started waxing it. And I probably put 10 different uh, buff jobs on this of wax, uh, buff it off, put wax on, buff it off. Then I put this glass cloth on it and I glassed the entire fuselage, okay? And right now this is a, let's see, the bottom layer was six ounce cloth, and then I had three two and a half ounce cloth, which was actually too much. This ended up being way too thick. But I jump again here, and I don't know why I don't have pictures here, but I then prime and sand this, and prime and sand this, because this is going to be the outside skin of the airplane. Okay, I'm not making a mold. This is what I call a reverse mold. What I'm going to pull off the plug now is what I'm going to use for the airplane. And if you look at this picture here, this is what I pulled off the plug. Now, if you notice, that is prime and sanded really well. It's hard to see. You can see it on the table to the left. But basically, the airplane is ready for paint, at least the fuselage. This is what it looked like pulled off the plug. Okay, and then I went into a direction that I learned a lot from and made a lot of mistakes, and I want to share that with you. I never try to hide anything from you when I've really went down the wrong path, but I did go down the wrong path here. So um, here's all of the um, bulkheads that are going to go into the airplane, and I was going to, the reason I wanted these in the airplane is anybody, anytime you look in the uh, ramp, I want you to see all of the bulkheads that go down the fuselage like you would see on the inside of a real aircraft. So these weren't, these were structural, but they were visual. So here's what one looked like when I cut it out on the bandsaw. And keep in mind, I don't have a laser cutter. I cut all of this by hand. This is a bunch of the other parts. And if you looked at my design video, which was one video back, you remember I had those TO drawings of the real Hercules and you saw in that a couple of pictures of bulkheads. Well, this one um, is where I got the idea for this bulkhead was looking at those TO drawings of the full scale C-130. Same thing here. So that's all the carnage left from me cutting out all the bulkheads. Then I started to trial fit, just tape in some bulkheads. But keep in mind, I've already made the skin way too thick and heavy. And now I'm putting in plywood eighth inch light plywood which are it's light it's not birch but this was in hindsight when the fuselage was done this is one of the things that contributed contributed to this airplane being a complete pig it was a lead sled okay i could have built this plane 20 percent lighter if i would have built one of these before i just wasn't thinking the skin on the on the fiberglass should have been at least uh, probably the four ounce cloth and then a couple of two and a half ounce cloths and I was done with it. And keep in mind, when you use thicker glass cloth, it holds a lot more resin. And I'm going to do a video on that to show you on a square foot how much resin goes into all those different fabrics one day. I then made a jig and laid the fuselage on its side and started putting the bulkheads in. And, you know, at this point of the build, I was so excited because it was looking really cool and it was straight and everything was fitting. But little did I know, I was really just putting way too much weight in this airplane. <clears throat> this is what it looked like when I stood it back up. And that's the jig that, 
it's attached to a jig that I could lay flat on the table or lay in vertical like this, just so I could kind of get visually into what I was doing. This is all of them on the right hand side of the fuselage. And if I were to do this again, which I'm going to, I'm going to build another C-130 one day, I would 3D print a lot of these. And I'll show at the very end of this video series, what I'm going to do is a supplementary uh, kind of closing video at the end of what the next C-130 would look like, because I've already experimented and 3D printed some bulkheads. Okay, so I know that I would most likely 3D print a lot of these bulkheads. I know I'd use thinner glass on, on the skin and be able to make this thing a lot lighter. But you got to admit, that's really sexy the way this was coming together. I mean, the entire, inside the entire cargo bay was going to look very scale. Another thing, and I'm going to address this when we talk about the landing gear design. Getting the landing gear, you can see that FB-16, there's a notch in it. That's for the landing gear. And you can see the hole cut on the other side. That's for the landing gear on the skin. It is a absolute pain in the rear end to get the landing gear for me to be scale and fit into this right. And when we talk about the landing gear design, I think it's going to completely blow your mind. This was both halves being test uh, fit, fitted together. And then I was getting ready to epoxy the two sides together and I had an epiphany and thought, well, wait a minute. I need to paint the inside of this fuselage with my airbrush before I glue the two sides together or I'm never going to get inside and paint this thing the two colors. I wanted the inside of the fuselage to be gray and the tail to be kind of an olive drab. And that's because I just found one on the internet that C-130 was painted that way. I think it was an Australian C-130. This is the two halves before I put them together. More masking tape being destroyed. If you notice in the upper right hand corner is the mock-up of my landing gear. So keep in mind, even though I'm building the fuselage right now, I was stopping in the middle of the fuselage design and working on the landing gear to make sure that all this was coming together. Okay, you, I don't know how to stress to you how important it is to try to stay ahead of the curve, stay ahead of when you're going to need things. If you notice on the left hand, there's already holes drilled in that plate for the nose gear. I had already put the nose gear basically together as a mock-up because I needed to make sure it would fit in this fuselage. So here we're looking in the um, tail once it was uh, glued together. I laid in a makeshift uh, floor of the uh, cargo area. Got my four workers hanging out wondering when it's uh, time for a beer. This was a mock-up of the ramp and when I talk about the ramp design I really messed up. I mean I did some really boneheaded things and went back and redesigned the entire way the work the the ramp would actuate because keep in mind I was going to have scale tanks and artillery and all kinds of stuff flying out of the back of this thing and the first ramp was like a trampoline and I'll discuss that when we talk about the ramp. Here we've got Joe pretending he's uh, paratrooping out of it just for uh, kind of a scale look. Now we're going to get into something that's really hard for me to explain and hopefully you can visualize it. But this piece of styrofoam underneath here, I messed up here, didn't take a picture. There is already an airfoil that's been hot wire cut out of that block of styrofoam. And these two pieces applied one on top is the top of the fuselage. So basically, I put the two pieces of plywood on like this. Keep in mind, there's an airfoil that I've already cut in this. Okay. So I hot wire that hump through my airfoil. And then the airfoil lays on the fuselage for me to mark where I've got to cut out the fuselage for the wing. This was one of the most stressful things I've ever done in a long time because once I cut that fuselage fiberglass, there's no going back unless I'm going to try to repair it, which would really, as OCD as I am, I might have just thrown this whole thing in storage and just stopped for a while. But as you can see, the airfoil worked perfect. I, I laid it on the airplane, measured it a couple of times to make sure everything was right. Notice how much of incidence the wing had. I think it was about two and a half degrees. And then I started to mark the fuselage. Said, okay, that's where I got to cut my hole. Cut my hole. 
then I just sat there and wondered, oh my gosh, is this right? And I started then realizing, man, when I go to build the way the wing attaches to this, the, you know, most of these uh, tops of these bulkheads you see here get cut out because of the way the wings attach. And when we talk about the wing design, you'll see that. And then I slid an airfoil in. Notice the template in the front. I slid an airfoil in to make sure it would fit. Then I had to cut the front of the top of the fuselage out where I was going to get to some radio equipment and stuff that was going to be toward the nose of the airplane. I shouldn't say radio, batteries. Uh, and not flight packs, but there's batteries that actuate the ramp, uh, batteries that actuated the landing gear, batteries that actuated my receiver system, batteries that actuated the lights. Uh, there's all kinds of things that I was going to build in the nose of this airplane and kind of disguise as cargo that was going to operate the aircraft. <clears throat> I then cut the nose of the airplane up where the cockpit was going to go in and airbrushed in a little bit of gray there, popped in a very makeshift uh, flight deck, stuck some guys in there. Keep in mind the windows aren't real scale there, but once I put the window frames in, it looked a lot better. And that's pretty much it on the fuselage, everybody. The next video is going to be on the wing, and that is another unbelievable trip down memory lane but um, yeah that's pretty much uh, that's this video everybody so the C-130 you know I'm doing a series on my B-36 and the B-36 was absolutely a mind uh, I don't know how to put it I mean there's you have to think so far ahead when you're designing where components are going to go parts are going to go and I thought when I built the B36 I had accomplished that and then you know I built the MSL1 and got it flying well actually it was built first but I put it made it electric and got it flying and then I took on the C130 project and I was pretty frustrated because in the C130 I thought I had done everything in CAD that would make some of the lessons I learned on the C on the B36 uh, mistakes I made go away and I didn't I encountered the same frustration where things might not fit here or I had to rethink this or before I cut that piece of fiberglass I better my ass better know what I'm doing I mean because once I cut that do I want to create all new skins and I could have because I still had the plug but um, yeah just I don't want to deter anybody from doing this kind of things I just want you to realize you will be frustrated. You will encounter times that you just want to throw the whole project away. But I have never had a hangar queen where a plane just went to storage and never flew. I either sold them or I flew them. Um, so, yeah, that's it. So, I hope by now you have liked and subscribed if you're a new follower. And if you're one of my uh, loyal fans, thank you for watching these and being a supporter of mine. And I will see you next time. Keep in mind, just build. Just just do it. Um, I know sometimes it's frustrating, especially if you're tight on money. I've run out of money two times in this hobby where basically for a year I just didn't do anything because I ran out of money. Uh, I mean, I flew a lot. But uh, yeah, and take kids flying. Get kids involved. There's so many sciences involved in aviation. A lot more sciences than playing a video game where you drive around a Corvette and you kill everybody by running over them. A lot more science and aviation than killing people. So, uh, yeah. So, rock on. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Be safe.